Good morning, everyone. It's DJ Rachel. I'm back for, what's today? Wednesday. I'm telling you, when you come to these things, you lose track of time and days blur together and all that. So it is Wednesday here at the DJX 2022 uh, show. I have an exhibitor pass here. I'm kind of hanging out with uh, Max Design and I wanted to hit the exhibitor floor before this opened up at noon. So it opens up at noon every day and once it does, they turn the lights off. It gets loud as hell in here. You know, if you guys were following me yesterday, you can see how a little crazy it gets in here. Um, I partied a little bit last night. The voice is doing okay, but I can tell it's kind of on the fritz. So I wanted to come down here today and kind of stop by some of the booths I didn't get to stop by yesterday so I could talk to you guys without having to shout and give you an opportunity to ask questions and things like that. So what I want to do right now is swing on over to Danny Max. Let's see if he's here. He is. Danny Max is here bright and early. Uh, he's all set up, ready for the show floor. He was so busy yesterday, so was I, so I really didn't get a chance to stop by his booth, so let's extend my selfie stick here. So everyone say good morning to Max Design, Danny Max here. Good morning, everyone. All right, so obviously we're on Facebook Live. Nice. And, um, you know, I just wanted to stop by today since yesterday was crazy, and it's a lot quieter right now. Yes. So we can actually, you know, just talk about anything new you got going on or just show, you know, the great yeah. stuff you already have. Everybody knows I use his stuff. I have an Infinity L uh, DJ console. It's changed my life. Like I'm, I know it sounds dramatic, but seriously, I can't imagine going back to a facade and standard table. So um, I'm here to support him, represent him. Any questions you have, you guys know I use this weekend after weekend. So I'd love to kind of show you some of his products if you're not familiar with it and uh, just kind of go over some things and answer questions. Sure. Yeah. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is talk about the new thing that you just okay. dropped. Okay. So if you guys aren't familiar, Danny Max just dropped a brand new product it's pretty cool and it's making its debut uh here right on the showroom floor so let's kind of walk on over and check that out okay all right cool so let me flip this camera around so i had quite a few people ask about can i have a smaller setup can i make my ceremony rig a lot of, a little bit easier so we developed this the other day uh basically it's a small rack it looks like the, the rest of our products um it assembles the same way using latches but the best part is the back side. So we'll take a look at the back right now. You'll notice we have a full 19 inch rack mounted vertically because that's the only way we could do it, but that's not really a problem. It's actually 5U, so you got space there. There's a couple shelves in here. Basically, the point of this was so you could set up for a ceremony in a few minutes. So you have all your microphones, you can put a power conditioner in here. Everything that you would need, there's storage in there. So you can go to a ceremony, you can set up and be ready to go probably within five minutes. Now, we designed this to fit in a case. We love our SKB cases, so if you want to come this way, or actually, I'll bring it out. This whole thing fits in this nice compact case. So imagine having to bring this, maybe one speaker, and that's it. Um, it's the same as our rest of our SKB cases, super protective. And of course, the best part is it's got wheels. So you can wheel it right in. So that's our new product. We don't even have a name for it yet. We didn't put it on our website. We didn't lock in a price yet, but I will let you know that including the case, it will be under $1,000. How close to that $1,000 mark, we're not sure yet, but we'll be dropping that really soon. Very cool. Uh, so just to recap, um, so again, I love Danny Mac stuff, but personally, um, I don't think this would work for me just because I keep, like I literally bring an iPad and a microphone. But if you check out Lou Paris's ceremony rig and people that offer, you know, multiple services, tap-ins, um, you know, racks and microphones and things like that, this is about as simple as it's gonna get because it just stays installed, you pull it out of the case, you plug it in, and that's it. So this is cool. Um, people were asking for it. It's white, you know, it's it's modern, it's clean, it's a small footprint. So if you're looking for a solid uh, ceremony option, this is this is pretty cool. Um, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, and it, listen, it's not for everyone. Like for Rachel, it's not because she does a much more compact uh, setup. But for a lot of people, I hope this will work nicely. A lot of people ask you for rack space. Yeah. Like it's really important to what we do in our workflow and everybody has different needs. So exactly. it's an option. Exactly. Yeah, no, this Another is option on the market. Yeah. very, very cool. So this is his uh, new debut unnamed uh, ceremony setup. Yep. All right, cool. All right, so let's just kind of go down uh, 
the line here. So these are the Danny Max totems. These are probably my favorite thing that I have. Well, no, that's a lie. I love the booth, but in terms of attention, everybody loves these damn totems. So number one, they have ape coins in them and ape labs, also my jam, you know that their music mode is second to none. Um, if you check out my last gig log, I have a, a far away shot of me under the tent and the only thing you see are these totems and it's just, they're such great eye candy. Um, you have made some like upgrades to them from the first gen with like the plates and stuff? Um, we, we, had, we made the plates slightly wider. Uh, still fits in the same case. We made them slightly wider just to give a little bit more stability. But other than that, no, they're pretty much the same. So what was really awesome about these, these were my first time um, using them on a outdoor dance floor. And as you know, outdoor dance floors, they're manually set up, they sit on grass. So there's a little like flex and wiggle to them. Well, I had the dance floor jump in and I was like, oh my God, like these things are gonna shake. It was like they were glued to the floor. I was so um, impressed with the, the stability of these. And I was kind of nervous at my last wedding last Saturday because it was on, again, like a man-made temporary dance floor. And they knocked it out of the park. So I do the same thing uh, Danny Max does. I have mine paired with the J-Maz uh, movers. I have the Aero Spot 60s. Are these the beams or these the These are the beams. Okay, so these are the beams, and actually we have J-Maz uh, right behind us. Uh, we'll, I'll stop by there later today, but honestly, you can't ask for a better pairing. You build this totem, which assembles with just a couple of uh, latches, like all his other stuff. Right there, there's your ape coin up there. You build the totem, you plop that wireless uh, mover on top, and there's no taping, there's no gaff, there's, no there's nothing here. Wireless. I'm gonna. I'm gonna flip this around. It's completely wireless. So wireless moving head. Here's the totem. And then once you get to the ground, boom. So you can put this anywhere in the room. No yeah, gaff, yeah. nothing. Now don't forget to mention, you can also leave out the center section. Right. And do a half height totem. Or this is about four feet, this is about six feet. Um, but you have flexibility, so it gets you to back. You don't want a tall totem or you want to do all four, too short, too not. All you do is leave out that center section. It's that yeah. Easy. So what he's he's trying to say, so you clip this top, you leave out this part, and then you just use that bottom piece, and that's how you get the four foot totem instead of the six foot totem. So you can have uh, some flexibility with that. I freaking love these things. Oh, and can I tell you the the reason you, so the motive you you might not know the motivation behind me pretty much begging him to make these. So I had a wedding, and I forgot my totem scrims. You know, like the ugly, scritchy things. And I I they were my Novo Pro stands, and I had movers, and I had to put them back in the car. And I was pissed. And I was like, I can't believe I sabotaged myself over like two pieces of spandex. I actually called some DJ friends uh, in Connecticut to see if they could help me out and let me borrow a pair. And I was going to send, you know, my assistant out to go meet them. I, like, that's how bad I needed these. And nobody could help me out that day. So I had to pack up my totems, which meant I didn't have the lighting I needed for the event. And what I kind of promised the client, it was totally my bad. And I said, after this, Ex expletive scrims. I hate these damn things. They get dirty. I forget them. Um, I hate scrims. So I was like, please make a totem where we don't require scrims. So all it is is a plexi panel. Velcro's on, Velcro's off, and that's it. So I love these things. All right, moving on down the line. This is the uh, Infinity DJ Console XL version. Now, to be clear, in all my videos and my product review, I did it on the L which is, I'm sorry, um, the, yeah, the, the XL. Yeah, no, the Infinity I'm so, Sorry, tongue twisters here. There's a lot of L here. The Infinity L is, that's the one I have. This is the big boy here. Now, what is amazing about this is Danny has designed this to literally fit anything. So whatever your preference is in terms of brand, turntables, controller, you can fit it in here. So we have this set up with Rain 12s, which are, extremely popular and they fit absolutely perfect so what else is new right now 
is we just sourced a new case. So we were built again in custom road cases made for this top unit because we couldn't find anything else. We found an SKB case that actually works well and everyone's been asking for it. So if you want to show them, it's actually that case in the corner. It's the first time we're showing this as well. Um, it's a big case, listen. It, but it's, it, here, it's definitely you big. hold my selfie stick. Okay. Check this out. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie. This thing looked like a, like a coffin. I was like, how, who's going to lift this up? Yeah. The case is 47 pounds. You can still move it. I was like, wow, that's a big case, but... And it has wheels on it, so you can pull it. Yeah. I love SKB stuff. Yeah. Well, I, we, clearly, we do as well, since we design our products around those SKB products. Yeah. So, new case. Um, here's the rack mount space. So, he's got a mic in here. He's got his power conditioner. Headphone. Holder, like everything else, gooseneck, dual laptop. laptops. I love how we're lit. <laughs> Cubby holes. This is where I store a lot of stuff. If you guys didn't check out um, my top installation video, definitely check that out. You can see how I have everything wired and how this all works. So this is his biggest model of this. So again, if you have a bigger setup or tables, you're going to need the XL version of this. Cool. All right, so we got more totems here. Oh, this one is also awesome. So this was uh, one of the newer consoles. He, um, did you drop this in 2022? This was at PBX. PBX, um, okay. Yeah, PBX uh, 2022. So yeah, just what, six months ago? Yeah, six months ago. So Danny listened to the community. Um, his flagship original design was this two column style which is what I have, I love, especially with the totems. I just think it's just a really unique, great look. But people did say, listen, I need a little bit more space and I'm kinda, I feel weird about my legs. I don't know what it is with DJs and their legs, but they don't like people to see them. So he decided to make a front closed version and this is called the Edge. Specifically, this is the Edge L, meaning this is the smaller version. He also offers this in an XL, just like this one where you can fit um, everything, everything. everything. Same, size top. same size top so if you want to put rain 12s in this version you can absolutely do that same uh, ape coin integration this folds down into pretty much two and a half panels it's two l-shaped panels and then one panel that snaps in between and closes it off it's all hinged so it folds flat uh it folds flat to probably about eight inches tall yeah it folds flat in a skb case of course and it is just as easy to set up as his other stuff i actually have another video on this but i'll give you a, a quick look everything of his uses this latch design so it literally just snaps together you don't need any tools all done by hand um these are hand adjusted for for tightness you know, so you can make them as firm or, you know, as loose to kind of just snap them into place. Here's your ape coin integration. Uh, these literally just stay in the booth. So you install them and you just, you leave them there. Uh, this is the rack. So this does have a significant more, um, significant more potential for rack mounted gear. So if you think you're a little limited with, um, that's a 2U? I never remember There's this. There's two in the XL. Two, right. Yeah. There's two U in the XL. Um, the, one, one U. the one U in the L version that I have. So if you need more gear, this is probably the unit you're going to yeah, need. The rack is not included, but we're just demonstrating that you can fit your own rack in there. It does need to be a shallow rack, however. Yeah. So it's got to be a shallow rack. Um, and just in case you couldn't hear him, because he's like six foot two and he's huh. standing and I'm kneeling. <laughs> um, it does not come with this so you guys would have to supply your own racks but he's just showing you what this is capable of uh holding gear wise and you still have space up top too right oh yeah there's still a rack up yeah top. there's still there's still a rack up top so you can fit a lot of stuff in this and all the same features right same laptop stand cubby holes gooseneck you can get headphone holder so all of that is uh available in all all models all right so those are the dj consoles uh, I haven't been paying attention to the question, so let me see if there's any. Just everyone's just saying good morning. 
So hi everyone, thanks so much for uh, stopping in. So everybody knows I also have a photo booth and there was no way that I was gonna get a photo booth and A, not have it match the rest of my stuff and B, um, I'm a DJ first before a boother. The reason why I got a booth was I got asked all the time and I would make referrals, but a lot of times those referrals were already busy and the amount of effort and coordination it took to do that, I was like, why don't I just get one myself? Now, I'm not a photographer. I have no interest in being a photographer. I really just wanted a fun, simple solution to give my clients an option um, of a photo booth. Now, if they want a more premium experience with a DSLR camera, you know, he offers all those types of models. For me personally, I wanted to go with an iPad style booth. They take great photos. Um, I actually don't even offer any prints or props because I use Curator Live software and they have so many fun features in there. It's almost like photo booth software meets like Instagram. Like they have all these filters and virtual props and things like that. So it's, I treat it like a social booth. I kind of just set it up, have fun and pack it down at the end of the night. I can literally set up an entire photo booth, which right here, this is the Curve Duo. Is this the big this one? Is the Ultra. The, the Ultra. 12.9. It's actually the fifth generation 12.9 in there right now. So I just have the Curve Duo, which is just a standard. Uh, the original, which is right around the corner. The original, yeah. just the regular, uh, what is it, 10.2 iPad? Uh, I think you have the 11 inch in yours. Um, this will I love how he knows my stuff more than I like know my stuff. <laughs> this will fit anything from a 9.7 up through an 11. 9.7 up through an 11 uh, tablet. This is the, the big boy over here where you put like an iPad Pro. Um, it's awesome. Picture quality is still really good. And what I love about these additional pillars, I actually grabbed a set of these. Not only does it make people want to come use it, right? Because look at how fun this looks. How smooth. Um, you know, the patterns are, it's like eye candy, but when you go to take your photo, they all synchronize and turn a very bright white. And- Let's take a photo. Okay, I wanna take a photo. <laughs> Technically, I'm not All right, so here's our photo. Look at that, it looks great. For an iPad, that looks phenomenal. And what makes this look extra crispy and um, just sharp and just a great photo is having good lighting. And these add so much additional light. So if you're working like outdoors, if you have like an outdoor event where, you know, the inside doesn't have a lot of lights and you need that. Uh, so I don't know, here we go. Actually, I'll flip this camera around. I don't want it to fall. But I could literally, if I had like balance, I could literally hold this light like with one finger. I, I think we weighed it. I think it's like six pounds, probably with that battery on this it. Is, yeah. And this battery pack is 90% of the Yeah, exactly. These things weigh nothing. And again, you can put it anywhere. No gap, no tape, nothing. Um, and you can come closer. Yep. And as a, a vent for moving it like more a to unconventional venues, like people are getting married in fields and barns and backyards and I think the pandemic really shifted that and it kind of changed you know the locations we do this having that flexibility to literally put this anywhere without needing a power source or having to tape things or like grass and stuff like that it's clutch and this material it doesn't get dirty you can drop water on it you can drop wine on it check out my video so if you have to do this outside I don't think you put it in a mud puddle as long as you keep the iPad dry you're good it just wipes down with like a wet paper towel at the end of the day a little windex or something like that so um do the same has been awesome. awesome 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 that's great yeah so those are the photo booths and let's take a look at the uh dslr one well dslr is on the other side of the showroom oh this is got it. a curve mini okay uh which i don't think we've ever really shown much uh this is our most economical ipad booth it has a led light up top uh, that provides the lighting for the photo. But if you look inside, there's really not much in here. We have an iPad, we have an LED panel, and then I stuck a couple batteries in there and that's it. So this is a really easy, quick to set up booth. Uh, it also weighs under 50 pounds on the case. Awesome, awesome. So with that, um, I'm gonna see if there's any questions. I actually have to go run to a seminar right now, like literally run. Um, Josh Lass is gonna be doing something on um, building business and multi-op stuff so I want to make it to that 
So, I don't know. Um, I'm going to check the chat for any last-minute questions for Danny Max. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll say goodbye. You send some questions to me, too. Yeah, or hit me up later. I think we are we are good. So uh, with that, thank you so much for your time. I'm Thanks. glad I got to catch you before things get crazy because yep. I'm telling you at it's noon, about it's about to get loud in here. All right, so let me grab my backpack and, oh, my backpack's over here. <laughs> I forget everything everywhere. Thanks, Danny. Uh, we'll thank be back. Yeah, Absolutely. See I'll see you later. All right, folks. So that was the Max Design booth. I'm going to be uh, going up to the... Um, education part of the hotel and if you guys want I will stream this as well hope you all are enjoying your day I'm gonna be going live uh, probably a few times today as long as my oh I just see a question now does it run off a hotspot social photo booth yeah so I have an iPad with a oh I'm sorry building things and I'm not paying attention because I'm walking with a stick I have an iPad with a data plan um, but you can just use a hotspot off your phone I do no I don't take a day off um, I just I haven't I lost my train of thought sorry I got distracted I have an iPad with a data plan but you can also just turn on a hotspot with your phone and that's good enough how cool this hotel is. I love the hard rock. We got some in sync memorabilia here. Good morning, guys. Hello, hello. So I'm going on up to. Oh, right here. This is going to be me. Brighton Ballroom 1, 1 30 to 2 30. I'm going to be presenting with Beat Source talking about all things streaming. Okay, so now that I know where I'm going, uh, ballroom four, let's go there. I actually really shouldn't talk so much because after four hours of stream, hey, what's up? These are my boardwalk pals. What's going on, Dude, everybody? We got funnel cake. We, uh, at like one in the morning. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, when did you guys make it to bed? Did you guys sleep good? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, no. So, hey, are, are, you going to, are you going to Christmas seminar? But you have a thing that overlaps with those. I do, unfortunately. So, one of my favorite seminars here is by Chris DeVico. And, unfortunately, my uh, Beat Source one overlaps with his, which is really upsetting to me. So, if you can make it to Chris's... Go to Chris's because that's that's the important one. All right, I say I got a DM. I will check it in a minute once I get into the room. Are you coming to Josh's right now? No, we're actually looking for food at this point. Oh, there's there's no food over here. We're going. Up the oh, the boardwalk. I'm avoiding the. I don't know Roman area. numerals. Is this four? Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wait a minute. Is this right? You know, I don't think they got the times right. This, I thought was changed to 1030. But apparently we are early. All right, not a problem. We'll just, uh, we'll keep streaming. We'll keep walking around. I promise you, we'll get you, you know, into the seminar. It's going to be starting in about 15 minutes. So... Oh, I know where I could take you while we're waiting. The uh, demo rooms, if people are in the demo rooms. So RCF has a demo room here, as well as Base Boss. I think I'm walking the right way, I'm not sure. Let's see if we can get into the demo rooms. They're pretty cool. Go get some pizza. Eh, I probably could. Nah, I'd be late. I'd be late. Don't have me doing uh, have me doing bad things. All right, I am officially lost, so I'm sorry. I'm trying to find these uh, demo rooms. Definitely try to make it next year, guys. That's why I'm doing this. I want you to kind of see, you know, 
the great show. If you can't go to a mall, that's okay. You know, pick one, but definitely at least make it to the expo in New Jersey one time. It's one of the biggest shows in the country. It is awesome. Well, good morning. Good morning. Where are you off to? I, well, I was going to go to the seminar down here, but it's full, standing room only. Which one? Josh's? Yeah. No. Cool. It's packed. Did they move standing rooms? Room, yeah, it's in the seminar. Yeah, it's in this. Oh, I went into the room I thought it was in, and it was empty. Yeah, I know. Seminole number three. It's in the, it's in the first room. Standing room only. Yeah, yeah I think the, the dates are next year. Oh, I'm so glad I ran into you, because here I'm thinking it's starting in that room at 11. And enacted. They're going to do your daily ops. They're going to push ideas forward to the rest of your team. And they're going to make it happen. The preachers. These are your salespeople. These are the people that are going to get on the phone, they're going to go to bridal shows, they're going to go to venues, they're going to, they're going to sell your brand. The grinders. These guys get it done. Every team needs grinders. You need the people that are going to do the grunt work, the hard work, the stuff that's not fun. And this is what most of you are right now. I do it all. And that's fine to start. But I'm going to tell you, if you stay a utility player, you're going to burn out. You're going to miss something. You're going to miss an opportunity. You need to get out of this role. And you need to put yourself in one of these. And then to grow and scale, you need to fill these roles. So obviously, I'm the thinker. All right? Michael fits into the grower role. And even though he can fit into all of these, that's where I've placed him. And he does a phenomenal job of it. Preacher is my brother. If you've met him, he doesn't shut up. <laughs> Ever. Shut up, Matt. However, you can't talk that much right now because you lost your phone. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll get you a new one. My grinders. Dan, stand up. Tom, stand up. These two guys started as DJs with me. And then when I decided we were going to get into the party rental side, which, uh, Tents, tables, chairs, catering equipment, all the stuff that doesn't sound fun and exciting. I was like, hey guys, we need to move this stuff. We need to set it up. And then their response was, all right, we got this. They didn't know anything about tents. They didn't know anything about chairs and tables and linen size. And because of their ability to grind and move and work, we now have a fully functioning party rental company. But if they were in the other three roles, they wouldn't be able to do that. They wouldn't be focused. But because of them, our team functions and they stay in that role and that's where they're placed, and you guys do a phenomenal job. I know you DJs, I know you love DJing, half the time they move the tables. Yep. So thank you guys. So this is for all of you to think about. You don't have to answer it here, but you need to put yourself in one of these. And once you do that, then delegate the other parts, because you'll see the efficiency of your company increase tenfold. All right, and you keep each other focused. The thinkers and the growers work very well together. The preacher is going to push the ideas forward that the, the, the grower is pushing forward, and you're going to see the sales increase. You're going to be able to target markets. You're going to be able to target specific kind of events or parts of the industry you want to make money with, and it just flows. I call this the circle of happiness, and let's all be real. It all starts with money. All right. If you don't pay people well, and that includes yourself, all right, owners need to be paid. If you're not paying yourself, how can you be happy? Because you're watching your company grow and you're not making anything. All right, yes, it's, it, as owners, it's our job to sacrifice if we need to, but we don't need to. If you're growing the right way, you need to get paid as well. So with money, your staff will feel respected. I'm not saying that's the only thing that's gonna cause respect, but if they're paid a fair wage, they'll feel respected. Respect leads to connection, and connection leads to motivation. And this is your circle of happiness that's gonna create a very well-functioning team that's going to push your brand forward and excel you past your competition. Trust and performance. If you think trust is more important for an employee, raise your hand. If you think their performance is more important, raise your hand. Perfect. Performance can be changed. You can train someone. You can work with them. If you can't trust them, fire them. All right, there is no reason to keep someone on your team that's not trustworthy because they will destroy your brand. I don't care how long they've been on your team. And this isn't just from the beginning. Trust and performance can both change. You can have someone on your team for 20 years. 
And if they can't be trusted anymore, they're off that team. And it doesn't matter if they have 50 events booked with you or two events booked with you. You can replace them. But do not allow someone to stay on your team if you do not have trust in them anymore. It will spread like cancer and you will end up regretting holding on to them. The damage that can be done by a dishonest employee or team member is tenfold. You don't want to go down that line. Make the hard decision, terminate that employee, move forward. And we'll discuss termination in a few slides as well. So building the team, I'm not going to dive too deep into this because there are several other seminars that are discussing specifically building your team, but I'm going to touch on it. So a lot of our people are full-time. That means they have healthcare benefits, they have 401k, they have a guaranteed salary, they get commission. They're not, they're not gig workers. And that's both by choice and by company structure. You can offer multiple different pathways on how to pay people, and what works for you works for you. The reason I like the salary people is it gives them stability, all right? I mean, again, everyone can pay how they want to get paid. I do this because I have control over schedule and because it's stability for my team. We're gonna talk about experience and no experience, part-timers and full-timers, like I just said, putting people where they're going to excel. And this is one of the hardest jobs as an owner or the leader of a company, is knowing where to place someone. And they might not want to be placed there initially, but they have to be placed where you need them and where they're going to excel, not fail. Juggling personalities, egos, and empowering your team. We're DJs. Every one of us has an ego. All right, we have an HR nightmare on our hands when we hire multiple DJs because everyone has that ego. So it's different than hiring a bunch of desk workers. All right, everyone has an opinion. We're all rock stars. Try to manage five rock stars. It's not fun. No one to remove someone from the team. We'll get into that for the termination slides. So experience. Why, do you, why would you hire an experienced person rather than a clean slave? Well, the time to deploy is super quick. I guarantee anyone in this room, I could take you, send you a job, and you're going to successfully complete it. Now, whether you're going to complete it the way I need it done for my company is a different story. But if you're in this room, if you're at this expo, there's absolutely no reason you can't successfully complete a wedding or a mitzvah or a sweet 16. You care enough about what you're doing, and you have enough knowledge to get the job done. Again, getting the person used to our brand is the hardest part. The habits of an experienced DJ are not going to get broken. They're not. Where is Carlos? Stand up for a second. Carlos is one of the few people I've hired that has, has experience. And we had a long conversation over dinner, and we both talked it out. And I respect his style, which isn't 100% the way I do it, but I trust him and I allow him to perform the way he performs. I'm not gonna to try to change his style of performance because he has years of experience doing what he does. If I try to break that, half the time he's gonna spend performing thinking, oh man, is Josh or am I gonna question what I did here and am I gonna get fired or yelled at? So I made an exception. The rest of my team for the most part, for the most part was you know, trained from the ground up or they trained me. Mike trained me. Yeah. So, so you know, give me a simple. So don't say I'm never gonna take an experienced person or I'm never gonna take a non-experienced person. You have to make it work for you, but you have to also be a little flexible with the experienced people because they have their mindset, how an event runs, and you're not gonna break that. No matter how hard you try, you're not breaking it. No experience, they take a long time to deploy. You're gonna to have to work with them because they represent your company and your brand. And you're not gonna just put them on any wedding. So you're going to have to really pick and choose where they're going, who they're training with, to get them molded to what you want them to be. Because they are going to sell you, they're going to be an extension of you. And it doesn't matter if you've been indebted with a venue for 20 years. You send a DJ that doesn't meet your company's quality, it's going to, the venue's going to question it. And they're going to be calling you and then you're going to have to talk to your employee. It becomes a circle of, this is going to be crap, let's be honest. So make sure you take the time to train your people before you deploy them to the field. Do not just throw them to the wolves. I know a lot of us, way, way earlier, that's how we learned. If you have house accounts, if you have venues that trust you, do not throw new people to the wolves, especially at those venues. Right? That, will, that will ruin an account for you. Reason I have a lot of full-time entertainers 
is because it allows me the ability to book quickly without wondering, are they available? Because they are available. Because they didn't request vacation. They are mandated to work. We are very lenient on time off. There's four months I do not allow time off unless it's a very personal reason. None of my team gets off May, June, September, October. I can book you anywhere I want and as many jobs as I want those four months because those are our bread and butter. You will bring in more revenue in those four months than the rest of the year, hands down. You can literally only work those four months and still, if you budget correctly, be a very profitable and successful company. I'm not saying to do that. Let's work all year, make as much as we can. But those four months, if you have full-time employees, unless it's a family member's wedding or a personal emergency or they're a medical condition, they're working, and they're working Friday, Saturday, Sunday if you want them to. And that's why we do full-time. It is very costly to maintain, because when they're full-time, you can't just write them a check and say, yeah, we'll send you 1099. You have to have a payroll system in place. You're going to pay, uh, pay employer taxes, and that's gonna vary state to state, so that's an accountant and you conversation. You're going to have to offer health insurance if you have X number of employees, and that's also a state-based thing. Jersey and New York are different, depending on where you are, you might be obligated to offer them, you might not. But there's additional costs with having this guarantee of an entertainer to make you money. It gives your brand stability and continuity. When you have the same entertainers going to the same venues time and time again, it builds trust, they know what they're getting, and honestly, most of the venues, the only the venues are gonna know who the company is, but if I send Mike to one of my house accounts, they don't care that it's LB Entertainment or the Hudson Valley Event Group. They just know Mike is back, thank God. It's gonna be an easy day. And that's what you want. You want these venues to see your team over and over again saturating the market. Because when you're in every venue that's important in your area and it's constantly your team, when the client goes to book and they say, hey, what vendors do we use? and you have everything in one house, they can say, oh, call, call the event crew, because they got great photographers and great DJs and they have all this, and they can do everything under one roof. Oh, good. Uh, Dan, can we plug that in? <laughs> My computer got unplugged. My, uh, yeah, it's gotta plug that in, otherwise I'm gonna lose everything. It's okay, I'll go, thank you. We'll get to this when it comes to equipment failure. Saved, we had a contingency plan. <laughs> All right, so if you, if you don't have full-time employees, it's something to discuss with your accountant first because there's a lot of budgeting that goes into it. All right, it's not just, hey, we're gonna make you full-time and pay you $70,000 a year. It's a lot more intricate than that. And then there's a lot of HR stuff that goes into it. So please, before you go home and say, hey, Bob, you're full-time now. Have a conversation with the people that understand it and make sure you're set up on the back end to do that. Placing people where you need them. All right, this is something that most people have, have trouble with. They hire someone, they're like, hey, what are you good at? What do you want to do for the company? And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm a DJ. I say, well, yeah, but you're full time, so you can do more than that. You, you're gonna need to sell, you can do marketing, you can do logistics. You know, you have to do more than just DJ because now you're part of the organization, so we're gonna place you in a role. And you need to balance the team member's ability and the organization's needs. Because their desire, as much as it's important, that can, they might change that. They might say, you know what? I don't mind checking all the uplights and, and doing the gear maintenance. It's actually pretty cool, but they might not have even thought of it before they became full time. But if they have no ability to do the job you're placing, you're setting them up for failure and you're gonna lose a good DJ. So your, your main goal is obviously keep your entertainers focused and keep them moving forward. If you put them in a, a secondary role that they hate, it's gonna transfer over to their performance and you're gonna lose them on both sides. So do not set people up for failure just because you're like, hey, we need someone in the warehouse. I can't put a shelf up. You could ask Mike and my guys, all of the shelving units, anything mechanical, I didn't do any of that because I, I couldn't build anything to save my life. So if I wasn't an owner, and someone's like, Josh, your job's to put shelving up and move stuff around, I'd quit, because I'm horrible at it. I just have no mechanical ability. So be, be cognizant of where you're placing your people, so you don't ruin their ability to entertain and make you the money when you need to. But you need to also cover your, your needs. So be very, very conscious of what you're doing with that. 
Work ethic versus talent. Who thinks work ethic is more important? Who thinks talent is more important? No one, that's awesome. This is my favorite, favorite slide of all time. Now, I'm not really a huge sports fan, but I love Michael Jordan, and I love him because he didn't start as the greatest. He worked his ass off to become the greatest. And I'm not gonna argue the whole Kobe, Michael Jordan thing, I don't, I'm not a sports guy enough, but he's, he's still here, so we'll start with that. But he, he worked. Oh, that went dark. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good. All right. <laughs> this is still a little bit of paramedic. I mean, we have a really dark sense of humor. Sorry. All right, so that leads into my next slide of the bond of a team. Can my, the guys that are here for my team, can you guys stand up? These guys, they work their butt off. And they work flawlessly. I, I can count on any single one of them to do anything I need, but it didn't happen overnight. They didn't just become a great team. They were all great entertainers individually. But getting them to work as a team and to, to function so they can cover each other, especially during COVID, these guys covered each other's events constantly. They were getting clients that they didn't initially get booked with, and they just did it flawlessly. The clients were happy, and none of them complained. Oh, I'm doing Mike's job, or I'm doing Chesky's job. I just, they just did it. And they backed each other up. They even so much as prepped a hard drive for each other sometimes. And getting your team to do that it is, is not the easiest task because you might have people that don't like each other working for you. Luckily, I don't have that problem. You guys can sit down, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be standing all the time. It's not church, up down, up down. <laughs> but you have to work at that. If your team doesn't like each other, they're not gonna be able to cover each other. And having the ability to have your team back each other up is so important because you know what? Shit happens. Wait for me go. I'm not plugging you. All right, so he's gonna talk about that in a few hours, which all you guys should come back and see. But I'm not gonna make someone work a wedding if they had a death in their family. I'm not gonna make someone work if they're in the middle of a divorce. All right, we're gonna get them coverage. The client will understand because you know what, whoever's covering them, if you're on my team, I trust you 100% to get that job done. And my clients are not booking individuals, they're booking the company because they trust the brand. And that's hard, especially if you're a single out going to a multi you have to step away from Hey, I'm Josh, I'm your wedding DJ. To my, my agency, my company, is covering your wedding and we have it taken care of. If there's an illness, we got you covered. If there's equipment failure, we got you covered. So you have to sell differently. Because otherwise, if I'm like, hey, I'm Josh, I'm doing your wedding. Oh, by the way, I can't make it, here's, here's Victor. They're gonna be up in arms. They might even cancel a contract. But when you structure it from you're hiring an individual to you're hiring an agency, they have no recourse. They can't say I'm canceling because I'm not getting Josh. You could try, but that ain't happening because you didn't hire an individual. You hired a company. So that's why I'm not worried. I, I have no reason to terminate anyone on my team. But if I did, I'm not worried about losing their weddings because I have a contract that protects me and I'll enforce it. So the client understands what they're getting. My staff knows they have backup and it all goes around and it's fine. But it's a big shift because 90% of us started with we're selling us. And when you go into your consultation, that's what you're selling, but you need to take that you know, shift and sell the brand and not you. You can give them a personal touch, all right? Every one of my guys sells differently, has a little something they do differently, but the brand remains the same, and that's what's important, that's what your clients need to hear. And you can't, you can't change that if it's already booked. Like if you promised a client something, you can't be like, hey, I was just at an expo, and uh, I don't wanna do it the way I used to do it, now I'm gonna just sell you my company. They're not gonna let that fly, but you can say, you know what, as of January 1st, our policy is gonna be, we sell the company. And we, we will try to accommodate your request for entertainers, but you're gonna guarantee a phenomenal entertainer, regardless if it's Victor or Carlos or Mike. You're getting someone qualified to handle your needs, but I'm not promising you anything. And that will protect you when you have the problem of staffing. So, your team, Team dynamics, getting on the work that we just talked about. You have leaders and you have supporters. We work in two-person teams 90% of the time. 
Everyone on your team needs to learn how to be a leader and a supporter. Because if you're the lead on a wedding, you're the lead on the wedding. I don't care if you have 20 years and your assistant has, has 10. Whoever is leading it is in charge and the assistant needs to take that back role. And there are plenty of times where we have two highly experienced people working the same event. And being a leader normally and then having to take a back seat is very, very difficult. So you need to trust your team. Because I guarantee you, if you're normally leading weddings and now you're running a photo booth or you're handling the back end, it's tough because you're thinking, what would I do? Why are we doing it this way? And prime example, when Mike and I work together, we've been working with each other for 20 years. There's constantly a, hey, I would do it this way. And he's like, my wedding. I'm like, you know what, you're right. And I'm gonna use that one example, that Michael Jackson song, I Want You Back. I like to start it and mix it in. He likes to start it right from the beginning and talk. And it was a constant battle of when we start that. It's, it's small and it's stupid, right? But that's the kind of thing is, if you're not the lead, it doesn't matter how I wanna do it. That's what he wants because it's his client for the day and his show for the day and I need to support him. So taking both roles is important and you need to practice it. Playing time. You need to give your team fair amounts of work. All right, and that also boils back to selling the brand and not the individual. You have the option to choose who you're placing on events. Split the work up for two reasons. One, you don't want to burn people out. Two, you need the clientele to see your whole team. Having one person get booked 70 times in one year and one person only doing 10 events is not gonna benefit your team. You're gonna burn out one entertainer and you're gonna have one that feels resented because he's only doing or she's only doing 10 events. Split your work up. If you have to sell a client on a different entertainer, do that. But give people fair work. You're all fired. <laughs> all right? Why do we fire people? We fire them because of policy, performance, ethics, and sometimes there's no longer needed. Pre-COVID, the workload was significant, and I'm sure everyone saw the downturn. If you have a massive team pre-COVID, and you're coming into this era with the same size team, you're bleeding money. So as an owner, as someone that works at budget, you would have had to either shift people to a per diem status and pay them only on the events they're needed, or lay them off. As an owner, it is not your job to bleed money so you can keep people. Your team needs to be able to scale up and scale down. Guys, no one's getting fired. My team, no, no one's getting fired. Thank God. Yeah. I got a job offer over here, I'll take him. He's all yours. <laughs> but my whole point is, if you're the owner, you're going to come across a time you need to make a very tough decision. Because if you can't financially support the company, the entire ship falls apart. So there might come a time you need to say, we have to cut 100,000 worth of expenses. And payroll is one of your biggest expenses. And it's also the easiest to cut, because not only are you saving the salary, you're saving the benefits, you're saving the employee taxes, it's a hard decision to make, but you might have to make it. The ethics policy performance is pretty cut and dry. You know, you have someone that, you know, drives drunk, hits a tree, you know, clients find out they, they killed someone in an accident, that's gonna be a problem for the company. That's an easy, easy way to remove someone from your team. Hopefully you never have to, but ethical, policy-driven, and performance-driven terminations are not that difficult. You'll know when they need to happen. But you need to be fair across the board. If you terminate someone for one policy, and another employee has the same issue, and you don't terminate them for that same issue because you know them better, you're gonna run yourself into a serious problem. So your policy is your policy. Policies can be adjusted, but if you make the decision to terminate someone because they showed up late for a job three times, you have another employee that shows up late for three times and you only suspend them, you're gonna run yourself into a serious problem. If your policy is policy, stick to it. Again, you should be adjusting your policy constantly. You should be talking with your legal team about that. But that's an easy termination. Performance, I'm a big fan of train, don't fire. If someone screws up a wedding or screws up a party, consult with them. Figure out where the failure was and fix the failure. One wedding isn't gonna destroy your company. A hundred bad weddings very well might. But if you could target what the problem was on that one performance, if it was actually 
an employee-related problem and not a client-related problem, you can fix that. Don't terminate someone because they had a bad wedding or they get a bad review. Talk to them, investigate it, figure it out. But again, those top three are easy. The bottom one is tough. Let's talk about terminating someone. I can't stress this enough. Brief and professional. You do not need to make this a stage act. You don't need to, to let your anger out if it's something that you're mad about. You just, very quick. I'm also a big fan of terminate in person. These people work for you. They gave you their time, they gave you their energy. They deserve the respect to look you in the eye when you do this. The only exceptions is if you think it's gonna turn into a violent or dangerous situation for the rest of your staff or yourself. And if you're thinking that, then you should have terminated this person a long time ago, okay? Allow them to be emotional, but you don't need to get emotional, nor should you. This is hard for them. You're telling someone potentially, you no longer have an income. You no longer have health insurance. You're letting this person hear some of the worst news they're gonna hear in their life, especially if they've been with you for a while and have a significant salary. So allow them to be emotional, don't disregard it. But you need to still control that conversation and you need to maintain professionalism. Remove access to all software, email, keys, whatever. Don't give them a chance to, oh, I'll get the key back later. No, we're getting your key back now if it's to an office. Their email, their software, everything should be removed prior to talking to them. The minute you decide to terminate someone, email access gone, server access gone, everything. Call them in, do it quickly, out the door. This is not something to linger with. This isn't gonna be, if you're deciding to terminate, that's your decision. You're not gonna have a conversation and take that back because you've already made the decision with your team to remove someone from your team. It's not personal, all right? You might be friendly with your staff, but as an owner, they are your team. They are not your friends. Sorry, guys. I love all of you. But you have to understand that, all right? It's not a personal thing. If the person violated something and you're letting them go, then they're taking money out of your pocket and your family's pocket. It's not personal. Professionally, they cannot, they can't hack it, you need to let them go. Informing your team, this is where a lot of companies fail. You have to let the team know there's gonna change. They don't need to have every, every detail of why. But don't be evasive, okay? We're not hiding what happened. You can answer it simply. There was a policy violation where something happened and they're no longer on the team. Give them time to process and grieve, this is tough. You're removing someone that they've worked with, that they've hung out with, they might be best friends with. They're no longer gonna be there every day. It's hard. <coughs> keep the shit moving, all right? Opportunity comes when people get removed. You have to keep moving forward. All right, we're gonna talk about money, one of my favorite things. <laughs> Cash flow and revenue, you guys know it's two very different things, right? If you don't, you're about to. Revenue is the money a company earns from sales of products and its services. Cash flow is the net amount of cash that you transfer in and out of your company. I'm not talking physical cash, I'm talking any money, whether it be credit card, Venmo, whatever, that's the money you're moving. It doesn't have to actually physically be cash. Revenue provides a measure of how well your company is doing with your sales, marketing, and the effectiveness of both of those. Cash flow is an indicator of liquidity. Does anyone know what liquidity is? Okay. Liquidity is how quickly you can access and use your cash. So, money in a bank account, you can get to it pretty quickly. Cash on hand, instant. Investments in a 401k or a Robinhood account or whatever, it's gonna take you several days. So you could have 100,000 in there, but if you need that right now, it's not that liquid. You have to get it out, you have to process it, you gotta get taxed on it. Equipment, buildings, assets, vehicles are the least liquid assets you have, but they're still valuable. So you have to figure out in your company, how liquid are you? How quickly can you come up with cash if you need it? And that's, again, a discussion for your accountant and you. Hey, sir. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> cash flow and revenue can be predicted and corrected. All right? This doesn't happen by accident. You all know how much you can potentially earn and how much you're going to spend. If you're spending more than you're earning, you can, you can correct that. 
If you don't, you're going to regret it, but you absolutely can change your habits. Good revenue does not mean good cash flow. Okay, so just because your company makes a million doesn't mean you're doing well. Because if you're spending it faster than you're putting it away or budgeting it, it doesn't matter how much you're earning. Because if you don't have it to use, it's, it's irrelevant. So you need to come up with good cash flow predictions. And there's tons of apps that'll help you do this as well as your accountant. You can control cash flow completely, spending is a choice, right? There's certain things we have to spend money on. We have to spend money on payroll, we have to spend money on fuel, but you could say, you know what? We, we gotta get control of this shit. We're not spending anything for a week. Slow it down. Pay only essential items. Figure out what your cash flow actually is. If you're just spending money, spending money, you have no idea of how to predict your cash flow and how to predict what you need to keep in your account at all times. Smart spending. Buy in bulk. If you buy in bulk, you save significant money. Now you need a good amount of cash to do this. But if you're a multi-op and you need speakers and you only buy two, you're throwing money away. You buy 20 speakers, you're gonna get a much better deal. And if a company's not giving you a deal, talk to a new company. We all do it, we give deals to our clientele when they add more services. Does anyone not do that? No? So if you do it, your vendors will do it. So buy in bulk when you can, and have a replacement schedule. Don't just buy by accident. Streamline all of your equipment, software, and vehicles. If you have RCF speakers, Everyone in your company should have RCF speakers because it's an easy transfer. If one goes down, you have everything you need for it. And as speakers get older, and I'm just using speakers in this example, and you rotate them out of service, you have spare parts. And if anyone has any, I mean, I'm sure we all know how hard it is to get gear right now. But if you have one that you said, you know what, this speaker's five years old, it's okay, but we're gonna pull it out of service because it's getting old and want the new stuff. You have the spare parts right there. All you need is either a tech in the house or a good service shop to pull it from the spare gear. So don't throw your old gear out, but have streamlined stuff. Software as well. You know, it, it, you want to use the same stuff. If you have different divisions, you should have the same payroll software for every single division. Don't have ADP for one and paychecks for another. It'll become a nightmare. Earn while spending. This is, I'm going to catch some flack for this. I know this, but this is how we do it. Everything we buy, short of payroll or possibly rent, goes on a business credit card. Because two things happen. One, no, none of my vendors are getting direct access to my cash. There's protection. You're getting it from my credit card, I pay that credit card bill. You don't have access to my bank account. And I'm earning cash back on every purchase. So let's say you spend $100,000 a year and you're only getting 1% back. You're still gaining money on money you're spending anyway, as long as you pay your bills on time. You're not gonna benefit if you let that balance sit, but you're gonna gain a lot of money, especially if your company doing significant volume in spending, you're getting thousands of dollars back with cash back cards or travel cards. So do that when you can. And sometimes you'll say, oh, I'm paying 3.5% extra. No, you're not, you're gaining 3.5% write off. It's all how you look at it. But this is a much safer way. You can also track employee spending significantly faster than doing reimbursements. So get yourself a business credit card if you haven't done so already. I'm not saying a personal card that you use for business. I'm talking a card directly through the business. So look that up if you haven't done it yet. Utilize promotions and minimize paying additional fees when you don't need to. So if you can get free shipping by ordering a couple more things, do it. Look for deals. You know what you need to buy. You all know we overspend. We're DJs, we like toys. Minimize those purchases. No impulse spending. If you guys are gonna buy something, whether it be photo booths, photography equipment, screens, whatever, plan it out, budget for it, get multiple quotes. Your clients talk to three to four different companies, unless it's a direct referral. You should be doing the same thing. We're all partial to what we want, Pioneer, Denon, whatever. But when you look into upgrade equipment, you should be getting quotes from three vendors. Compare your needs, compare the quality, compare the cost, and figure out what works best. Don't just spend. And, and time that purchase date on January 1st, well, never January 1st, but whatever day you pick, that's when you buy it. 
plan these out, know they're coming. I hate accounts receivable. I hate having to chase people for money because I believe it's the biggest slap in the face. I'm providing you a service, I should be paid for that service. But if you deal with corporate clients, you are going to deal with accounts receivable, period. 30 days, be nice. 31 days, you better get aggressive. Because if they haven't paid you in 30 days, they have zero intention to pay you in 90. So you have to start the collections process early. The rule one is don't have collections. Have firm policies and procedures in place so your clientele knows this is when we need to be paid. The exception to that are some of these major corporations that will dictate the terms. And it's simply this, if you wanna work for them, you work it on their terms. If you don't wanna work for them, then don't work for them. But there are gonna be companies that say, we don't pay until 45 days. You have to do an assessment of, is this worth it? Am I gonna make enough money to be able to justify waiting 45 days to receive payment? Because here's the thing, your staff still needs to get paid on time. You can't tell them, hey guys, you're, you're waiting 45 days to get your paycheck because they didn't come in. They still need to get paid every two weeks or every week or whatever you do payroll. So you have to be able to float whatever you're doing. And as you get to more production stuff, the numbers get higher. So if it's a $500, you know, like midweek karaoke account or whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But if a company is waiting to pay you $30,000, can you float $30,000 for a month and a half? And if you can't, do not take that job, no matter how much that $35,000 or $40,000 looks very, very nice, because you will actually end up spending more and losing more to gain that. Between man hours trying to collect it and the process and paying people out, your account will end up taking a hit. So unless you're able to float, do not take on accounts like that. You need to be aggressive with accounts receivable. All right? We all, we all like to be nice. We like to have our clients like us. But if you let them forget about payment or if you're not firm with them, they ain't gonna pay you. There's nothing wrong with reminding somebody you have a balance, all right? And, and most of the time it is just because they, if it's not a big corporation, they just forgot. If you send out a contract and in your email it says, in seven days we need the retainer back, but you never follow up, it's on you. Most people, if they request a contract, they're either going to pay that retainer, sign the contract within 24 hours, or there, two things happen. Either they forgot and life got busy and they need a reminder, so you should automate that to go out every single day. And if they get annoyed by it, then they're not booking you anyway. But sometimes people will be doing something like, hey, I'm gonna review this with my fiance tonight. And they get home and the fiance had a bad day at work, the kids are screaming or whatever, and they forget about it. Just remind them, a simple automated email. Oh crap, I gotta sign this contract. And, and if they're not digital, and you don't have a link to a payment instantly in that email, you need to change that too. Make it simple for people to pay you. Take credit cards, take Venmo. Don't go crazy, I'm not saying like have PayPal, cash, have everything. Streamline what you want. We do Venmo, credit card, cash, and check. If you're doing check, we wanna get it in person. I don't wanna have this, it's in the mail stuff. But streamline it, make it easy, don't be afraid to remind people. Send invoices and paperwork promptly. Half the time you don't get paid is because of your own fault. If you don't send someone an invoice and they say I need an invoice to be paid, you can't get mad at them for not paying you. That should also be automated. Do not extend net terms to people you don't have a pre-existing relationship with. All right, that's a perk. If you've dealt with the same client, same company for 15 years, you wanna give them net 30 terms, they're good for it. But if you get a new corporation, you wanna sound like you're a big shot, oh, we'll give you net 30 terms. Prepare to not get paid. All right, so it's not a thing that just happens. And honestly, for the services we're providing, there's really no reason to do that. On the rental side, we do net 30 terms a lot because I have proof that it, the product was delivered. You can't question a tent, the tent's a tent. But if you get net 30 terms and you're a DJ, watch how quickly some of these guys in accounts payable say, well, I don't really think I got everything that we wanted. You could have rocked the performance. The bean counters will argue it. It's not itemized, it's not broken down. How much does that speaker cost? How much does this cost to put this up? They will nickel and dime you and these companies will change what you're getting paid. So don't, 
don't do net 30 terms on the DJ side. Your production side, much different. Get a lot of proof, get pictures, and be able to fight for what you want. These are all the things you're gonna hear when you call people, and for accounts receivable, you need to call people. If you just email them, they hit delete. Call them, call them from numbers they don't know. Get them on the phone. Most of the time, that's all it takes. You know I'm good for it. I'm a poker player. When someone says, you know I'm good for it, I know they're not good for it. <laughs> Check is in the mail. we all heard that. And now they have an excuse. The postal service is even slower than it used to be. So now this could be like a four-week thing. Let me follow up with accounts payable. That you're going to hear a lot. A lot. I need a second signature. No, you don't. That's an internal policy for corporations. Most banks aren't going to care. If you're getting a check for that larger amount that you need a second signature, it's already handled. Because that means somebody already approved it. They'll issue a purchase order, which means it's approved, it's good to go. Oh my God, it wasn't paid. And then find me at the end of the event. If I hear that, we're not getting paid. How to avoid it with private clients. Be direct about your payment policy. It needs to be written in your contract. You need to remind people about it. Send balance reminders prior to the event multiple times. Again, people get busy and forget. Sometimes they're not blowing you off. Sometimes they're not going to try to avoid paying you. But think of how busy you guys are. Think of how many emails you get on a daily basis. You need to remind people. Avoid collecting balances the day of the events. Very, very, very rarely will I collect the day of the event. And now, will that prevent tips? I don't think it does. If you do a great job and you provide a great service, if the client is going to tip, they're going to tip. If you want to wait to get handed a fat stack of cash like it's 1980, you're probably getting burned. Implement late fees and interest. If people charge you late fees and interest, why aren't we charging them late fees and interest? Everyone tries to take advantage of wedding vendors. Operate the same way as other professionals. If you don't pay your credit card on time, interest late fee. If you don't pay your car payment on time, interest late fee. You don't pay your DJ on time, interest and late fee. From now on, implement it. They will pay quicker. And if they don't, you're legally obligated to collect it as long as it's written out in your contract. Private parties must be paid prior to start. If you are going to allow them to pay on the day of, get paid before you start because what are you going to do, stop after dinner? Yeah. You know, you have no recourse. Once you perform that event, you have zero recourse to have these people pay you. Some people will just not care. Take me to collections. And it's even worth it to take them to collections. You know? So if, if that is your final stopping point to get paid on a private party. Corporate clients are a little different. Get the contact and accounts payable. The person booking you probably has, unless it's a privately owned company, probably has very little ability to get you your money. So you need to have a contact in accounts payable that you can call or email directly to deal with it. And I'll give you an example. We do a lot of work for Legoland in New York. They have so many different divisions and no one knows where the money's coming from. They have horrible terms, but they pay significant amounts of money, so we deal with them. I have a contact in, the, in accounts payable now, after several months of finding one, we get paid instantly now. They have a 45 day policy, every 45th day, boom, check is there. But before I had that contact and a personal connection, getting paid for them, we had accounts that were seven to eight months past due. We had, we had guaranteed approval on purchase orders. We, had, we saw it in their processing system. They just weren't doing anything with it because they're so big. They're a billion dollar corporation. They're forgetting about the small stuff. It's like them dropping 10 bucks. But once we have that person, hey, John, can you take care of this thing? Yeah, no problem, done, boom. We get paid now. So find your accounts payable contact. And it's simply as simple as sending an email to your client, hey, who is the person in accounts payable I can talk to this problem? I don't want to bother you. I know you're super busy. Who do I talk to if I have to collect money? And they'll give it to you because they don't want to be bothered. <laughs> Issue all required paperwork, invoices, W-9s, insurance. You need to know what you need to give to them. All right, documents are important when it comes to corporations. You should have a W-9 ready to fire out to these people. If they want something changed on it, that's fine. But you should have the invoice ready, the W-9, if they require certain insurance, 
and some of them might, some of them might want writers or additional insured, just like we do for venues. But check with your insurance carrier to see if you even match what they need. Some corporations require different things. So have that all in one PDF, make it simple for them. If it's easy for them, it's easy for you. Charge a higher rate for net terms. Money loses value over time. So if you're gonna extend someone a 30 day, 45, 60 day, charge ahead of time. If they pay like that normally, they're not gonna care if you charge $400 extra for your service because it's gonna take 45 days. It's pennies to them. But now it's worth it for you to extend net terms. If you're gonna wait for your money, make them pay for it. You'll, you'll see a huge increase in revenue as well. These corporations will respect that because you're thinking like they think. Communicate through email with corporations. I know I said phone for everyone else. You want a paper trail. And if you are on the phone with them, email them immediately after, hey, just following up on our conversation, we talked about this, does this all look accurate to you? No fees for credit card transactions, it's a write-off, and I know a lot of people are gonna fight me on this. I'm not gonna lose a sale over 3.5%. I write it off. Also, if you're that concerned, raise your rates to where you don't care about 3.5%. You don't have to tell them you charge them a fee. That's the tackiest thing, in my opinion, it's very tacky. Hey, I'm charging you $1,500 for this, uh, the, the store opening. By the way, there's 3.5% getting added. Why don't you just charge them 1,600? Just, it's still covering you, but it doesn't have that tackiness, in my opinion. When it goes bad, and it will go bad, everything in writing, a paper trail is gonna be the only thing that protects you. Your word is useless. You need a paper trail. Money loses value over time you need to charge for. That goes back to interest and late fees. Be prepared to use a lawyer or collections agency. I'm gonna stress this with only if it's worth it. You're not gonna to go to court over $1,000. You will absolutely go to court over $100,000 but you're gonna spend 20 to get that. So you need to have the ammo to do it. So if you start dealing with these accounts, you guys should always be preparing on how am I gonna be able to collect this money? You need to prepare for it, and if you don't have an account set aside with the ability to do it, you can't fight it. So just consider it a loss. Consult your accountant about writing off bad debt. All right, if you know you don't have the wherewithal to go after this, you could write it off and it's probably a lot less headache. That's a personal decision, that's a company decision, but it's not gonna cost you nearly as much as fighting it in court, and it's personal opinion. I, I very rarely will do this because I, I kinda like the fight. <laughs> no. <And> especially, <laughs> like, nothing makes me happier than when like, a big corporation loses and we, we win. <laughs> especially when they have to use you again. Uh, improve your policy to prevent future loss. The reason you're in this situation is directly related to your policies. So you need to reevaluate what caused you to end up in this situation in the first place. This is one of my favorite sections because from my previous uh, career path, everything was about planning and, and fixing these when it went really bad. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail, period. You have to have a plan for everything. Whether you use it or not is, is up to you, but if you don't plan for it, you're gonna fail. What do we plan for? Equipment failure, we all know that. And most of you do a phenomenal job of this. I mean, there's DJs in here that have like tertiary and, and like 20 different ways to play music and have microphones, and you could probably land planes at JFK with the stuff you have at this point. <laughs> but that's where most people stop. You can run an event, you know, and several, there could be an EMP blast and you'll still have music playing. Personnel issues. Most multi-ops have figured out you need to have personnel on standby. If you don't know that yet, you will know it. It does not need to be your staff. You need to network. You need to be able to call someone and say, I need a DJ, I need a dancer, I need a motivator, I need a photo with opera. I just need someone to carry stuff in because I broke my, my hand, I can't carry it. I can still perform, but I can't carry my gear. This was said in a seminar yesterday, but your colleagues, or your best friends, your competition and your best friends. Don't fight each other. Vehicle issues, if you have a fleet, have a backup for that fleet. 
whether it be U-Haul or Enterprise or whatever. Economic issues. You can only plan so much for this, but you should have backup savings accounts. You should have the ability to run your company for several months without taking in any money at all. Acts of God. And this is going to sound stupid because, you know, what are DJs going to do during this? There's a lot. Earthquakes, blizzards, hurricanes are kind of, I mean, if we have an earthquake in New York or Jersey, we're in trouble. Blizzards and hurricanes we've had. Most of this is going to be how do you prevent losing things? Where's your gear stored? Is it all in one place? How do you reschedule events? Is your staff safe? The blizzard is the most common and most overlooked. Easiest, my, my little tip, if you're sending crews out in a blizzard, if in the Northeast, we still perform in snow. It's not gonna stop an event. Secure hotel rooms for your staff near the venue. If it's not currently in a hotel, just, just put it on hold. It's gonna cost you a couple hundred bucks, but do you want your staff driving home? Do you want them to have to drive there? If you can get a, a, a hotel 10 minutes from your venue and tell your client, our crew will be there, they're gonna be 10 minutes from your venue, so your event will go on, no problem. That's gonna put them at ease, it's gonna put your staff at ease knowing they don't have to drive two hours or three hours in the snow. Simple things like that, when you're, you're planning for, for worst case scenario, and it's gonna work out for them. So how do we start making a plan? Draft a formal business continuity plan. This is as easy as opening up Microsoft Word, writing those words, and then just jotting down horrible stuff that could happen, and then making plans for those horrible things that could happen. Start with simple issues and build from there. Speaker failure. How do we handle a speaker failure? Now we all know how to handle it, but if it's not written down, it doesn't mean anything. You want the newest person on your staff to be able to fix that problem. So write things, unplug speaker, get a new speaker out of bag, put speaker on hold, plug it in, step by step. So you all have to do is go down the line and figure out what to do. On bigger issues, if you, if you start with the small issues like that, it'll be easier to make disaster plans for the bigger issues. If you think it's stupid for the speaker issue or a microphone issue, you're never going to be able to draft a much larger problem. Nothing is too small or too large to plan for. Simple as that. So important guidelines. Keep it simple. Don't use tech terms. You want your photo booth operator to be able to fix your sound system if they pick up this manual. Detail everything. And I know that contradicts this, but detail everything simply. Ensure contact information is accurate. Your executives, your managers, your backup DJs, make sure their numbers are in that plan. And some plans will have multiple paths or outcomes. That goes into your more detailed plans. Phases of the plan, you're gonna create and plan. The creation and planning phase is where you sit there and think about what you need. All right, that's the most important part, you jotting down everything you need. Train for your plans. So if you haven't trained on setting up a new system or doing things like that, start doing that, and you'll train for bigger events. Enacting the plan when needed is really important, and your staff needs to know how to do that, so there should be a section in your continuity plan of how to enact the plan. Improving the plan for future incidents. If you don't continually update your plan, your plan will fail. Things change. The end result is everyone on your staff can enact the plan. Immediate action is taken. You have a team with a purpose. When something goes bad, people need direction. Give them that direction. And even with the best plan, the outcome can still be poor. You need to understand that, that just because you have a plan doesn't mean it's gonna work. It still might fail. But at least you tried something and you have something you can grow from there. If you haven't guessed already, I am a Star Wars fan. So. <laughs> Mergers and acquisitions. A merger, two companies, literally, formed together like the blob from the 80s and are now one company. An acquisition is like Pac-Man. The bigger company eats the smaller company and you still have the bigger company. Why merge? You want growth and more infrastructure. You're maintaining the management. You're maintaining the structure of the, both companies. You get to expand to new markets. My personal opinion is if you're merging, you shouldn't be merging with someone in your market. Merge with someone a little bit further out. Expand your area. You share the burden of management. Acquiring, you eliminate competition, you gain staff, clients, and assets. Complete control over the entity. And that's it, everybody. Woo! So
anyone has questions, you're all definitely welcome to ask me. What um, I use QuickBooks Online, and I use QuickBooks Online because um, it allows me access to QuickBooks Capital, um, which is the easiest way to get a quick loan for anywhere between twenty to one hundred thousand dollars. Because they don't pull your credit, they look at your financials. And that decision is completely based on, I mean, you have to have a credit score better than 550, which as a business owner, if you have any less than that, you're in trouble. Um, but as long as your company financials are solid, they're going to extend you that capital and they pay, it pulls right from your bank account. So it's a super easy loan, like approved in like, you know, after your first time, typically within the day. So that's why I suggest that. Again, talk with your accountant, find out what they want to use, but that one is my favorite. Josh will probably keep answering questions because the next seminar has got a little bit of time, so we're not like racing out of here. Um, but if you think of something later, make sure you get his card, find him on Facebook, or if you're friends with me already, hit me up. I'll get you in touch with Josh because Josh loves sharing this stuff, but he'll keep banging out some questions right now. Yes, sir. So in terms of uh, legal representation, is there like a particular concentration in which we should probably be searching for this like per issue, per like contract law. So my first suggestion is find yourself a lawyer that's personable. Uh, because your our business is unique. So you're gonna need to be able to sit with them, explain your situation, and then what I say is start simple. Start with a contract. Let's build a contract that works, but that lawyer's gonna need to understand what we do. Because the contract, you send your client a DJ contract that has seven pages. They're not signing it. So they need to be able to scale that back from normal and watch lawyer stuff to entertainment stuff. Because no one wants to do more than two pages, period. Front and back, we can get it all in So once they understand that, then they can start helping you with your company handbook. They can help you with internal policy with employees. Um, but you need to be able to call that lawyer and until you talk to a human being. So a general lawyer can help you with the handbook business. I'm going to go live later for Chris D'Amico's seminar. I have mine at 1.30, so we'll be... Any general attorney that you can get along with, and as you outgrow them, they will tell you, hey, listen, this is starting to get a little much for me to run the call show. So yeah, I'll be back later. I'm going to go get some... Actually, I have to go to the bathroom. I'm not taking you to the bathroom. So I will see you guys later. Thanks for sticking with me for this... Staff. All right. Yeah. Bye.